Bartholomew and the Ublick by Dr. Seuss. They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did is the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubbins. If it hadn't been for Bartholomew Cubbins, that king and that sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before. But that year, when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubbins didn't know what to make of it. Yet all year long, the old king did. All year long, he stared up into the air above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers. <laughs> the things that come down from my sky. All spring, when the rain came down, he growled at that. All summer, when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. All autumn, when the fog came down, he growled at that. And that winter, when the snow came down, he started shouting. The snow, this fog, this sunshine, this rain. Bah, these four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin, Bartholomew tried to calm him. You've always had the same four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mighty tired of those old things. I want something new to come down. Something new come down? That's impossible, your majesty. You just can't have it. Boy, don't you dare tell me what I can or cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am king. I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the land, and you rule all the people. But even kings can't rule the sky. His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it, but maybe I'm the one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubbins. I will have something new come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think up. For many days, the old king stomped around, trying to figure out some way to do it. Then finally, late one night, when all the lords and ladies of the palace were fast asleep, a strange wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. Why, of course, he began laughing. They can do it for me. Bartholomew, blow the secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your magicians, your majesty? Oh no, your majesty, don't call them. You hold your tongue, Bartholomew. You do as I command. Blow the secret whistle. Yes, sire, said Bartholomew. But your majesty, I still think you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast on the king's back secret stairway. And a moment later, he heard them coming. Up and right into the room, they came chanting. Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff. Vista, wisdom, mysticuff. We are men of groans and howls, mystic men who eat boiled owls. Tell us what you wish, O king. Our magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, to have you make something fall from my skies that no other kingdom has had before. What can you do? What will you make? For a moment they stood thinking, blinking their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word, Ublik. Ublik asked the king, what will it look like? Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog. That's all we know. We just can't tell you anymore. We've never made Ublik before. They bowed and started toward the door. We go now to our secret cave on Mystic Mountain Nikotave. There all night long we'll work for you and you'll have Ublik when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty, stop them. Stop them? Not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'll be the mightiest man that ever lived. Just think of it. Tomorrow, I'm going to have Ublik. It took Bartholomew a long time to get the excited king to sleep that night, but there was no sleep for Bartholomew. All night long, he stood in the king's window, staring out at the mystic mountain Nikotave. Somewhere up there, Bartholomew knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. All night, the magicians did. All night, they walked in circles around their magic fire, making magic mumbling with their clucking tongues. Oh, snow and rain are not enough. Oh, we must make some brand new stuff. So feed the fire with wet mouse hair. Burn an onion, burn a chair, burn a whisker from your chin, and burn a long, sour lizard skin. Burn yellow twigs and burn red rust, and burn a stocking full of dust. Make magic smoke green, thick, and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is now just right. So quick before the day gets light. Go magic smoke, go high, go high. Go rise into the kingdom sky. Go make the ooblick tumble down on every street in every town. Go make the wondrous ooblick fall. Oh, bring down ooblick on us all. 
Dawn was just breaking and Bartholomew was still standing, trembling, watching at the bedchamber window. But now as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. Then suddenly Bartholomew stopped smiling. Was he seeing things? No, there was something strange up in the sky. At first, it seemed like a little greenish cloud, just a wisp of greenish steam. It was swirling around the topmost turrets of the palace. Tiny little greenish specks were shimmering in the air over his head. Little greenish blobs just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hand. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about those blobs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, he shouted. Your oobleck, it's falling. The king sprang out of his royal bedsheets. By my royal whiskers it is, he cried. Oh, that beautiful oobleck, and it's mine, all mine. I don't like the looks of those blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down now as big as greenish peanuts. The bigger the better, laughed the king. Oh, what a day. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious oobleck. Out in that stuff, sire? Do you really think it's safe? Stop asking foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, run to my royal bell tower. Wake the royal bell ringer. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew didn't move. Run, barked the king. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran. Then up the ladder of the high bell tower, he climbed to the bell ringer's little cubby hole in the belfry. Ring your bell, he called. His majesty the king proclaims today a holiday. The old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, he said. The bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still nothing happened. Hmm, what's wrong with my bell, he murmured. I better take a look outside. He poked his head out through the little trap door. Merciful gracious, he gulped. What is that? All over my bell like greenish molasses. Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried. Look at that poor robin down there in that tree. She's stuck to her nest. She can't move a wing. That oobleck's gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. The bell ringer wrung his hands. If that stuff sticks up robins, it'll stick up people too. Someone's got to warn the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake them and warn them to tell them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter. He turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. To the trumpeter's tower raced Bartholomew Cubbins and on up the steps four at a time. As he ran, he could hear the plop plop of the oobleck on the window panes. It was pelting against the palace walls as big as greenish cupcakes now. He yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeter. He shoved the cold trumpet right into his sleepy hands. Get up, warn the people, blow the alarm. Alarm, yawned the trumpeter. Then his eye saw the oobleck. Those green things, Bartholomew, where did they come from? The king, his royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeter leapt from his bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. I'll blow the loudest alarm that's ever been heard in the kingdom of Did. But all the royal trumpeter blew was a glug. My horn, he gulped. One of those green things flew inside it. He tried to blow it out. He couldn't blow it out. He tried to shake it out. He couldn't shake it out. I'll get it out somehow, he yelled. I'll pull it out. No, shouted Bartholomew. Don't touch it. Trumpeter's hand was already in it. He pulled with all his might. Then the oobleck began to stretch. Then glong! The oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. He yanked his arm back with it right up to the elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeter wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what will I do? I don't know, and I hate to leave you here stuck to your horn. But if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs rushed Bartholomew Cubbins, down to the chamber of the captain of the guards. The captain was humming in front of the mirror, combing the ends of his handsome mustache. Captain, do something, shouted Bartholomew. Do something? Why? smiled the captain. What's wrong? Captain, haven't you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down now as big as greenish baseballs. Oh, that stuff, laughed the captain. What's so dreadful about that lad? You know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, it's dangerous. Nonsense, snorted the captain. Lad, are you trying to frighten me? Captains, my boy, are afraid of nothing. That stuff's harmless. I'll show you. I'll eat some. Eat some, gasped Bartholomew. Oh, no. 
But before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaning out the window, scooping up some ooblet on the end of his sword. Don't, Captain, don't! The captain did. By the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside the room, his mouth was glued tight shut with the ooblet. He tried to speak, but no words came out. Forgive me for leaving you, Captain, said Bartholomew, but a captain full of ooblet is no help at all. Bartholomew stretched the poor man out. He left him there on the chamber floor. Bartholomew went tearing through the zigzag palace hallways. I'll get the king's horse. I'll ride through the country. I'll warn the people of the kingdom myself. He pushed open the door that led to the royal stables. Bartholomew stopped. He could go no farther. The awful ooblet was plumping down as big as greenish footballs now. Too late to warn the people of the kingdom. There were farmers in the fields getting stuck to hoes and plows. Goats were getting stuck to ducks. Geese were getting stuck to cows. Outside the palace, it was piling up. Great greenish tons of ooblet, deeper and deeper on every roof in the land. There was nothing Bartholomew Cobbins could do out there. Shaking his head sadly, he stepped back inside. But inside, a moment later, it was just as bad as out. With an angry roar, the ooblet was suddenly hitting the palace harder. It was battering and spattering against the walls as big as greenish buckets full of gooey asparagus soup. Like a sinking sailboat, the whole palace was springing leaks. It was dripping through the ceilings. It was rolling down the chimneys. It was coming in everywhere. From every bedroom in the palace came the howls of the lords and the ladies. Go back to your beds, get under your blankets, Bartholomew went crying through the halls. But nobody paid the slightest attention. Everyone in the palace started rushing madly about. The royal cook rushed down to the royal kitchen. Bartholomew Cubbin saw him trapped there, stuck to three stew pots, a teacup, and a cat. The royal laundress rushed outside to save her laundry. Bartholomew saw her stuck tight to the clothesline, between two woolen stockings and the king's best Sunday blouse. He saw the royal fiddlers. They were stuck to their royal fiddles. Everywhere Bartholomew ran, he saw someone stuck to something. Then suddenly Bartholomew gasped. The king! Where was the king? He had forgotten all about him. It was in the throne room that Bartholomew found him. There he sat, old King Derwin, proud and mighty ruler of the kingdom of Did, trembling, shaking, as helpless as a baby. His royal crown was stuck to his royal head. The seat of his royal pants were stuck to his royal throne. Ublick was dripping from his royal eyebrows. It was oozing into his royal ears. Fetch my magicians, Bartholomew, he commanded. Make them say some magic words. Make them stop the Ublick falling. Bartholomew shrugged his shoulders. I can't fetch them, your majesty. Their cave on Mount Nikitave is buried deep in Ublik. Then I must think of some magic words, groaned the king. Oh, what do those words my magicians say? Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff. That's all I can remember and they don't do any good. The Ublik keeps on falling harder. Bartholomew Cobbins could hold his tongue no longer. And it's going to keep on falling, he shouted, until your whole great marble palace tumbles down. So don't waste your time saying foolish magic words. You ought to be saying some plain simple words. Simple words? What do you mean, boy? I mean, this is all your fault. Now the least you can do is say the simple words, I'm sorry. No one had ever talked this way to the king before. What? he bellowed. Me? Me say I'm sorry? Kings never say I'm sorry, and I am the mightiest king in all the world. Bartholomew looked the king square in the eye. You may be a mighty king, but you're sitting an ooblick up to your chin, and so is everyone else in your land. And if you won't even say you're sorry, you are no sort of king at all. Bartholomew turned his back and started for the door. But then he heard a great deep sob. The old king was crying. Come back, Bartholomew. You're right. It is all my fault, and I am sorry. Oh, Bartholomew, I am awfully, awfully sorry. And the moment the king spoke those words, something happened. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, I'm sorry. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, it's all my fault. Maybe there was and maybe there wasn't. But they say as soon as the old king spoke them, the sun began to shine and fight its way through the storm. They say all the falling ooblick blobs grew smaller and smaller and smaller. They say that all the ooblick that was stuck on all the people and all the animals of the kingdom of Did just simply and quietly melted away. And then they say, Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve and led him up the steps of the high bell tower. 
He put the bell rope into his majesty's royal hand, and the king himself rang the holiday bell. Then the king proclaimed a brand new national holiday, in honor of the four perfect things that come down from the sky. The king now knew that these four old-fashioned things, the rain, the sunshine, the fog, and the snow, were good enough for any king in all the world, especially for him, old King Derwin of Did. <laughs>